Good evening. Welcome to Mystic Matters. I love my mug. <laughs> mm. Yes, that's right. We are going to be interviewing some folks from Groton. Very excited about it. But first, we have some announcements from the Greater Mystic Chamber of Commerce. I'm Kristen Hartnett, and I'm membership manager there. Very pleased to be here tonight. Um, Suzette, unfortunately, couldn't make it. She is taking some well-earned time off. So she'll be back in a week or so, so you don't have to miss her too much. And you can always watch some old videos of us on SEC TV YouTube channel if you can't get your fill. Anyway, um, our next networking event is going to be Ness, and that is June 12th. We're so excited for the New England Science and Sailing to host uh, an event, and they have a little harbor cruise. So if you haven't been out in the water yet, then that is the one to be at. You can sign up at mysticchamber.org, of course. And uh, we do have the Mystic Outdoor Art Festival coming up August 11th and 12th. I know it seems far away, but if you want to volunteer or if you wanted to be a vendor in that show, you can do that as well and uh, contact us at our Welcome Center. Welcome Center is open seven days a week now. We're very thrilled about that. Um, if you want to volunteer there and tell everybody everything you know about the best lobster, where to get the best chowder, who has the best $2 beer, all that, then you can volunteer with us at the Welcome Center. And if you're a member, then you know that we're representing you well by uh, referring the at least 8,000 visitors we got last year to your doorfront. Now, uh, let's start the show. I'm looking to my left and to my right because I have two great guys that since they've come on the scene at the Greater Mystic Chamber of Commerce, um, they have really been moving and shaking the town of Groton. So uh, I will introduce Paige Bronk. Hello. Hello. How are you? I am well. How are you? Excellent. Thank you for this lovely mug. Very nice, right? And yes. John Reiner. Hello. Now, um, what is your position, John, at the... So I'm... Uh, it's a mouthful. I'm the Director of Planning and Development Services. Planning and Development Services. So yeah. you guys are always tricking me because you're like economic and community development page is. We make a good team. Yes. That's true. You're covering yes. all your bases. Yes. So Planning and Development Services covers planning, economic and community development, as well as building inspections, code enforcement, things along those lines. All right. So it's the whole one umbrella, soup to nuts from beginning to end of the whole thought process for how we want to see Groton develop mm -hmm. to full implementation. Now, um, Sam Eisenbeiser couldn't be here today. He's, is he still on vacation? He just got back. Oh, so whatever. we gave him a break. <laughs> So, uh, but you guys are really like a dream team for over there. Uh, I just feel like you've been working on so much stuff and you've made Town of Groton really on the map. And that was your whole plan. What, speaking of planning. Yes. Um, so we were talking about these mugs because the, one of the fruitions of their hard work became a new logo, a new branding, a new website, a new image, really. Right. So um, there's the new logo. Did you do that, John? I did not no. do that, no. Now, how, how did you guys come across this? Did you, uh, you ran a contest, right? Correct. Uh, Paige's team put together a contest. I think he could probably speak to it. Paige, best. speak to that. Well, we actually had this um, kind of wild idea that we would reach out to the community rather than uh, reach out to a consultant or professional services. Mm -hmm. We thought that uh, the answer for what the new uh, slogan and and the new brand would be would actually come from within the community and we were we were a little nervous about that to be perfectly honest yeah with you. right it's like an um, opening a we really mask. didn't know what we were gonna get right. but we had over 30 submittals nice. and um, they they really ranged from from all different uh, ages and, and ideas and we ultimately ended up with this and um, we love it it's very colorful, mm -hmm. um, and it actually shows a lot of different images uh, that represent Groton. I won't cover each one, but if you note, um, we've been very attentive to the detail, the color scheme, uh, representing more of a comprehensive identity, and also the tagline, explore more. Mm -hmm. For many, many years, people would hang their hat on Groton. 
the, the submarine capital of the world. And that is true. And you'll see the subtle submarine that uh, is within this image. We're, we're always going to have oh, that, that history. Oh, that black part underneath there. That's right. Oh. We're always going to have that. That's a part of our future. But we're more than that. Mm -hmm. we're, we're more than simply the submarine capital of the world. And I think that was important for us to indicate. Mm -hmm. We wanted to put Groton on the map. And our theory is, uh, up until now, it really wasn't. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people outside of Groton were not familiar with Groton. They couldn't tell you where it was. Uh, what it did, or what it stood for. how to pronounce it, even. Uh, that's true. Groton. We still have people that say Groton. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, to back up what you're saying and all this exciting stuff about Groton, we actually have a uh, amazing video that was made by some of the guys on staff, right? Correct. Is that so these guys are now the most popular videographers in town because the video is so great. So right. we're going to take a few minutes to watch this and... If you don't want to move to Groton after you're done watching this video, then... Ah. All right, so Frank, roll the video. Groton's vibrant villages provide a distinct sense of community. You find everything is at your doorstep when you live and work in Groton. Opportunities lead to innovations. As Groton's legacy industries grow and evolve, an array of new enterprises is emerging. From artisan foods, to technology startups. Groton is a central transportation hub. It's easy to get around the area or to major markets. Groton has a growing workforce and educational facilities it needs to support an expanding business community. Explore more ways to enjoy the best community in Southern New England.
For more information, exploremoregratin.com. Pretty exciting. Cool. So, uh, explore more Groton is the new website. Exploremoregroton.com. Dot com. All right. And uh, how are you guys using this? How are you guys using all the new materials and the video and all that? Page. Well, <laughs> it, it actually is quite comprehensive. I, I certainly won't go through this whole stack, but we're placing our logo and our tagline on everything, mm -hmm. uh, from coffee mugs to 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 pads, to sticky notes, and back to the premise of trying to put Groton on the map, uh, we're actually getting out, out of Groton and going to different conferences and trying to educate the world regarding who, what Groton is. So we had um, these particular folders developed, and you'll find the color scheme and the graphics um, is top notch, and within Many of these folders that, that we um, go to these different conferences at, uh, that would be Hartford next week, Boston this summer, New York City uh, in December, um, we'll actually distribute all of what we call these cut sheets that talk about exploring more within Groton. And we highlight our assets. That would be, we've got one in here with the airport. We have one in here dealing with Mystic. We have one in here talking about the various villages within Groton, as people know. Uh, there are a lot of different villages within Groton, and we decided that we want to make that an asset rather than having a traditional New England green and everything centers off of that. We have lots of different places, mm -hmm. so we're trying to highlight that within these folders and educate investors, developers, and residents that they need to come to Groton, invest here, work here, and live here. Now, it's just surprising to me that not every town does this, you know, but when you do this kind of thing, it really gives a sense of pride of, of living there. I know you had examples of people that lived in Groton that were saying, watching the video and being like, what? What's all this awesome stuff that's happening here? So, John, tell me a little bit more about that. So, uh, that one of the things we're trying to focus on is getting people not only here to recognize what is within Groton, but it's the region and outside of the region. So, as Paige was saying, we want outside investors to come here and help explore more and help make Groton a better place. We all know how great Groton is, but a lot of people outside don't. So, the more we can use these materials, getting the information out there for people so that they then can bring their interest, their development, their potential to Groton, it'll help make a better place. We're very lucky with the growth that's going to be happening over the next few years with Electric Boat, that we have investors from out, uh, outside the region looking to Groton to invest here and help build our community. It's Developers are the ones that are building the community, actually building the infrastructure, the new homes, the new apartments, the new stores, restaurants, the things that we all use and need every day. We're, we're trying to tell our story. I think that's obvious. But um, one statistic that we're honestly not proud of, and it came up in the market analysis, 80% of the jobs in Groton are held by people that commute to Groton every day. Mm -hmm. And we don't have the exact answer for why that is. But we think we know some of the components. And the better we tell the story, the more we can lower that 80%. So. It's great that Electric Boat is growing, but we're, we're excited about it, the new people that are coming here because they'll be a game changer mm -hmm. in bringing our economy more into a contemporary era. That's gonna affect our housing, our dining, our shopping, entertainment. So our website, that's a nice segue here, our website is, um, it certainly captures all the colors, our logo, our slogan, but it educates people as to really what Groton is about, and it has certain portals. It talks about job opportunities, it talks about redevelopment projects, um, housing. It talks, it, it visits 40 places, over 40 places in four minutes within the video that was seen that we have embedded within our website. So it really tries to paint that picture to people as to everything that this community has to offer and the region as well. 
There is a lot going on. So, yeah, your website is very comprehensive, like you're saying, with uh, anybody that wants to move here or anybody that is um, looking to develop as well. Right. So you have other incentives that are coming. Um, the yeah. TIF project, is that? Yes. That's not how you say it, but yeah. you can well, explain it, a little bit about that. Yeah, so tax, TIF or tax increment financing, us planners love to use acronyms. So we're trying to use less acronyms and explain it. It's an economic development incentive that without tax increment financing, a project wouldn't happen. So we look at certain areas around town that I think a lot of people have wanted to see redeveloped, our downtown area, Route 184 and 117, a great example. We have a developer that's looking to invest $80 million and build a mixed use project there, having residential, having office space, having retail, but in order to do it, they need uh, a public-private partnership. They need the town to help in that, and we can use future a portion of future tax revenues as part of this tax increment financing to help the developer finance a little bit of the gap in the, the financing for the project. It's something that has happened nationally with great success. There have been some bad examples of it nationally. Usually what happens there is there's not enough transparency or people haven't dotted all their I's and crossed their T's. We are going through this very slowly, very deliberately, so that we're getting it done right. And it's worked very well throughout New England. So it's something that we're really excited about it. And one of the biggest components of it is, is it's not just, hey, we're giving taxes back to a developer. There will be great benefit to the public. So some of the public infrastructure improvements are things that all will benefit from. So it seems like you guys are pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. Like that really, um, I think that inspires people when they see that happening in a municipality. That when a municipality is helping themselves, then God helps those who help themselves. Isn't that the, yeah. <laughs> the phrase? But that's what it seems like. If you get some momentum going, then people will turn around and say, oh, that's really interesting. What are you doing? So, yes. I think the timing is right mm -hmm. as well. Um, electric boat on its own is not necessarily the only change. It's the influx of the new people mm -hmm. to the area. And um, there are parts of Groton that haven't really uh, been updated over a number of decades. And yet people want jobs, they want redevelopment, they want grand list improvements. So EB is more or less the catalyst for all of these changes that are about to take place. So I think the whole team that we work with in Groton, and it's a great team, realizes it's a special time, it's a special place, and, and now is the moment to try to come up with these creative approaches, whether it's TIF or branding or, or other initiatives. Unleash it now, move forward, because the time is ripe. Yeah. And you, you guys are ready, like obviously you're ready. Yes. So we're trying to do a lot of things in a very short period of time because we know Electric Boat is ramping up and we only have a few years. So we're working on tax increment financing. We're doing the, the marketing, the branding, the logo, a new web page. We're rewriting our zoning regulations. One of the topics I think we'll talk about in a minute is how we're uh, utilizing some of the town's excess properties for yeah. some key redevelopment opportunities. And the list goes on and on, trying to get this all set so the, the table is set for when electric boat finally hits the, the go button and starts building more submarines every year and has all those people on board. Now you did a market analysis. Was this before we knew about EB? It was. Because like everybody's talking about that and then I always have this other this feeling like what if the other shoe drops and the government says no that's not going to happen. But you did a market analysis to, to change sure. Groton before this was announced, right? right. So um, yeah. tell me a little bit about that, the market analysis and the multifamily housing and that kind of thing. Well, um, the leading statistic I already mentioned, the 80% statistic, which mm -hmm. is a real driving force for us. And we, we believe we need to get more people who work here living here. Um, but also the multifamily um, conclusion. Uh, basically, we have housing. And we have somewhat of a, a difference in generational perspective at this time where we have, let's say, baby boomers that look at our existing housing and say, we're plenty of housing. There's nothing wrong. But then you have millennials younger workforce that they want something different. They don't necessarily want the same type of housing that, uh, that, that a different generation desires. So the market analysis indicated we're really lacking that modern contemporary housing that's desired by young people. 
And that was like for a the, juice bar in the lobby or uh, a little yoga studio in the store, that, that kind of thing. All of that, yeah. You've got to you've got to have the entertainment. Six the, bars within walking distance. <laughs> Smaller housing units within walking distance. Mm -hmm. So having the top of the shop apartments, the you know you look at Mystic as a model. Now it's a it's a touristy area, but the the general model of how that's a working village works very well, and people want to see more of that style of development, not necessarily just geared towards tourists, but retail, commercial bottom floor, and then you know residential or other uses up above. So being very efficient with your, your land use. And the other piece that really ties into that and the market analysis stressed a lot was improving our sense of place. Mm -hmm. That was the number one thing they said, how can you separate Groton from anywhere else is improving your sense of place and getting those areas like a mystic or you know a, a downtown, in any area that you really feel it's there's something happening there. It's very walkable. A lot of the, the key places we think of, whether it's a, a Newberry Port, uh, a Portsmouth, Maine, um, again, the places that we go to visit and say, oh wow, this is really cool. Why, why, what is happening here? It's people are outside, people are happening. So that's what we wanna try to do. And we have so much character and so much sense of place to Groton a lot of it's just fragmented. So we're trying to figure out how can we pull all these pieces together? That video does a really good job of showing all of these different great destinations. So how do we just link them up a little bit with a little better development in between? Right, Frank, we have a couple of pictures. Can you show the pictures? Cause you're talking about mixed use and um, the downtown. Well, that's Mystic, right? So that side of the river counts as Groton over there. Right. <laughs> and uh, next picture. This is what I was thinking about. So the apartments upstairs you were talking about and the um, downstairs is all the retail and then you've got the sidewalk and there's parking on the street, right? So this is like an ideal kind yes. of, and the other it's, thing is the historic, mixed yeah, the mixed use, but the historic look to it. A lot of people are reproducing that um, even when they're building new developments, right? They're making it look all comprehensive and it's not like a um, strip mall or anything right. like that. The next picture. So what is this? This looks like a shipyard, maybe, out in Groton. Uh, Ford's Lobster. But again, we have so much waterfront here. The mm -hmm. fact that we have this much waterfront in town, yeah. it's a very attractive destination. Right. It surprises me how many people don't know about Groton right. and how relatively cheap real estate still is here for being a coastal community. And they think it's mystic, I'm imagining, that they don't right. realize that it's Groton. Next picture. So this was a development, uh, it was a strip mall looking thing from built like in the 60s right. and it was really getting shoddy. And so when you're talking about improvements, like this has been quick. It's beautiful now. Everybody's really impressed with it. This, this, is, um, this is an outside investor, mm -hmm. Cedar Realty Trust. Um, and this investor and many others are at many of the conferences that we attend and trying to attract developers. They, um, they basically made a conscious decision that they are going to reinvest in their property and do it right. There isn't a foot on that property that hasn't been touched in some capacity. And our goal would be to get more investment to bring the standards a little bit higher um, within Groton. Of course, we would like to see more of a mixed use development. This is pretty much retail for the most part. But I think it's clear to see the difference between this standard and some of the standards from, let's say, the 1970s. Well, and the impression that you get when this happens is that Groton cares. And so that gives everybody a good feeling. So I shop there all the time, but if it starts to get beat up and et cetera, then, you know, or if the storefronts are empty, then it gets kind of sad. And we right. don't really necessarily realize that it affects us psychologically, but I definitely think it does. And when you're talking about that sense of place, I thought about this as well. Oh my goodness, we've been having so much fun. We only have five minutes left. So. Uh, tell me what you want to talk about then. Quick. Wayfinding maybe? Let's touch on wayfinding quickly. <laughs> um, I'll be brief on that. Okay. Uh, a lot of people I don't think are really familiar with what we're trying to do with wayfinding. Mm -hmm. I just challenge people to think about other communities they've been to outside of Groton. And when they arrive at a certain community and they see welcome to this destination or they'll see the, the really nice pedestrian signs or maybe even maps that orient them. You are here and it gives you some proximity to the water. We're lacking that. Mm -hmm. We don't have that in Groton. That's what we've been trying to do. We have been working with a consulting firm, uh, Beta, and we do have a wayfinding 
sign plan, and that's town-wide. We are lacking funds at the moment to implement, but uh, we're hoping to change that in the future. Uh, there are parts of Mystic that we would like to add uh, more pedestrian-oriented signs, but also at key destinations. Case in point, when you come off the highway, uh, exit uh, 88, I believe, 117 to Route 1. We would love a really nice gateway sign mm. as you're entering Route 1 to mm -hmm. let people know you're, you've arrived and you're right. at a quality destination. Mm -hmm. That seems important. It so um, how do you go about getting funding? Like sudden, suddenly you're lucky, you already have like a grant in place. And so you're like, hey, whenever you get money, could you Well, I keep telling to John to project? buy lottery tickets, but I don't think he's doing that. <laughs> no. So it's something we've been talking to the town council, the RTM about this initiative and putting it on their radar that, hey, next year, come budget time, we're going to be looking for some funds. We're always looking for grants or other matching funds, trying to work with some of the private businesses in town to see if maybe we can raise some money for this effort, too. But it's something that'll take a couple of years to raise the funding for it and then get it installed. But I think it's something that'll really make people realize, oh, wow, the town's invested here. They're willing to put money into their infrastructure and make it that much nicer, make it look nicer, beautify it. Those are things that stand out. And when developers see that, oh, okay, this town is supportive of development. They want to see things happen. And when people that live here see that as well. Right. So the people that live here, do you need them to do something for you guys? Like it you know, in the defense of the project, the plan has not been finalized yet, and it will be this spring. Mm -hmm. So once the document is done, and we can distribute that to the public, the council, the RTM, and they see what this is, I think at that point in time, they'll understand that it's imperative that we actually implement it. But up until now, we actually don't have a product to show them. Okay. Um, but I think once they see it, they'll be convinced. So uh, how about the people of Groton? Like, what do you, you need them to show up at hearings or, you know, use the website or? I, I, think, you? I, I think things that people can do is be positive about the town. Mm -hmm. I think often we get negative. We don't see things change. Change is something that's going to happen. We've evolved as a species because we've been very good at adapting at change, but change takes time. And a lot of the initiatives we've been working on take time. Rome wasn't built in a day or even a month turning Groton around, turning that sub around has taken us a little bit of time. We have a lot of great initiatives underway. I think the continued support we've gone through, uh, I've been here for almost four years, Paige a little more than three. We've seen a few different town councils, town managers, uh, city councils, city mayors. Everyone has had the same consistent theme of being supportive of economic development. That helps us a lot, just showing the consistency so that when we're getting the message out, doing our distribution of our marketing materials, going to these conferences, spreading the word, people hear for years that, oh, Groton wants you to explore more. We want you here. We want people to invest in our community. You guys are really making a difference. That's awesome. We're trying. We're trying. I'm so impressed. And we're having fun. Yeah. And you're having fun. So is there anything that you wanted to get in in the last minute or so or um, explore more Groton? Make sure you go to that website. Definitely go to the Explore More Groton site. Please register um, on that site. You'll find an opportunity to register because we actually put out monthly newsletters as well. We're, we're trying to build this website and make it of value to the community and investors. And if you register on that website, you will be assured to receive automatically the monthly newsletters and other supplemental material that we release. So you really know all the minutia and details about what you're, you're doing yeah. and how you're helping to improve where you live. All right. That's right. Cheers to Groton. Right. I'm the Mystic Chamber of Commerce, and we are Mystic Matters. Good night. <laughs>